Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss HIPAA. What is HIPAA? Well, first it stands for, we need to know what it stands for, Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. And this act was established in 1996. It's a federal law created by Congress that was enacted to provide data privacy and security provisions for what? For safeguarding, protecting medical information. So when you visit a doctor, when you visit a hospital, when you receive any sort of a medical of a medical care, your information is in the hands of the other party, therefore it has to be protected. The first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna look at the key points of HIPAA, and let's start by talking about privacy of health information. This is one of the main aspects of it. It sets rules for healthcare providers, which we're gonna call them covered members, and health plans covering who can view and receive patient sensitive health information. It tells you who can and cannot view and receive this information. And the rules are designed for what? To protect the confidentiality and security of your health information, given the patient the specific rights over their information. Also, it sets security standards, and those standards are national standards. They apply in all states to protect the individual's record, whether that record is electronic or not, and that when it's created, received, used, or maintained by what we called a covered member or covered entity. Think of card, covered entity for simplicity now by the doctor, but that's not the only one. We're going to define covered entity shortly. This includes rules or who can, on who can access the health data, how is it stored, and how it must be protected. So it sets rules for that. There are other things that we need to talk about. Let's go ahead and keep going. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Well, also HIPAA set standards, set standards for transactions. For example, it specify standard format for electronic transaction like billing. For example, when the code XB75, it means this is billing for, an, for a person that stayed overnight in the hospital. It's the, it's the rent, not the rent. It's the overnight stay at the hospital, the bed expense, eligibility inquiries and other administrative activities, and code sets for diagnosis and procedures for efficient processing of claims. So basically, when you, when you see the code 0567, just, I made this up, it means this is an operation for an appendix removed, just for example. Also, it has a portability aspect. This is what the P is. Helps ensure that people can carry their health insurance from one job to another where there is no gap in health insurance coverage if they lose or change jobs. So if you work for a company, you move from company A to company B, your insurance will stay with you, covering you during that period so you have no lapse in the coverage. What else do we need to know about HIPAA? Well, it has enforcement rules. <laughs> you know, an act without enforcement is, you know, a law without teeth. Therefore, the rule sets civil money penalties for violating HIPAA. And we'll talk about a few violations as at the end, just to kind of give you an idea what does a violation would look like for HIPAA and establish procedures for investigation and hearing for HIPAA violations. Also, there's a breach notification rule. What does that mean? Well, if the information was breached, in other words, your information was release, released without your consent by either the cover entities or their business associate, in quote, the doctor here and people that help them, well, you have to be aware of this information. You have to be aware that there was a breach. What else do we know? Do we need to know about HIPAA? Data security. The data security rule within HIPAA specify a series of administrative, physical, and technical safeguards, which we'll talk about each one of them separately for covered entities and their business associate. Again, we need to define covered entities, business associate, to make sure the, the confidentiality is up, being upheld, integrity, and availability of the data if it's electronic data as well. And HIPAA, the, the purpose of HIPAA is to improve the healthcare system efficiency by standardizing healthcare and improve the efficiency and effectiveness of the healthcare system. It encourages the widespread of electronic data in interchange in healthcare with the goal of improving 
the operation of health organization and making them more cost effective. Therefore, if the doctor wants to look up your information from another hospital, they can do that electronically. Simply put, to sum it up for HIPAA, the purpose is to promote confidentiality. That's big, one, big, a big one. Security of the medical information, improve efficiency of the healthcare system, and ensure patients' rights are respected all while maintaining high quality healthcare services. Now let's look at specific definitions that you need to be aware of because we need to use them in context. The first definition that we need to know about HIP under HIPAA is protected health information or PHI. Under HIPAA, PHI is any information about the health status, provision of healthcare, or payment for healthcare that's created or collected by a covered entity, a doctor, or a business associate, business associate of a covered entity and can be linked to a specific individual. It means we can identify it. And this rule is interpreted broadly and it, and it includes any part of any individual medical record or payment history. So under HIPAA, PHI is any information that relates to the past, present, or future physical or mental health or condition of an individual, the provision of health care to an individual, or the past, present, or future payment for provision of health care to an individual because it can identify this individual. Identify the individual identify the individuals or which there is a reasonable basis to believe it can be used to identify the individual and what are those criteria what are some some identifiers that can be used to recognize an individual well it could be their name obviously geographical identification their addresses they directly relate to the individuals like date of birth phone numbers of course fax numbers if that's released their email addresses social security numbers well that's bad their medical Record number, all of those are identifiers for for what? For protected health information. Health insurance, beneficiary numbers, account numbers, certificate or license number, vehicle ident identifier and serial numbers, including license plate numbers, device identifier and serial numbers, web uniform resource location, if they have a URL, a web address, internet protocol address number, it can be get that biometric information, of course, <laughs> including finger and voice prints, if that's released full face photographic images, and any comparable images, as well as any other unique identifier, number, characteristic, or code. In other words, PHI. So what's considered PHI? Because we're going to say any any organization that has a PHI, well, protected health information, they, they fall under HIPAA. So any of these could be considered PHI because through those you can identify the individual. So let's talk about now moving from PHI to covered entities. So who are, who are those covered entities? I kept saying it's the doctor. Well, it's not only the doctor are defined as organization that must comply with HIPAA to protect the secure information. Simply put, typically handle protected health information. And you saw what the protected health information in any way or another during the regular operation. There are three categories, but any of these categories will fall under HIPAA because they have this information. First is healthcare providers. The reason I gave the example of healthcare providers because you can think of doctors. When you go, they have your name, your address, what's going on with you, your medical history, so on and so forth. But that's not only the case. Clinics, a dentist, chiropractic, nursing home, pharmacies, all of those falls under HIPAA covered member. Anyone that have access to, the, to your PHI, Health plans, well, HMOs, which is health insurance companies, company health plans, the government and government program that pay for health care, such as Medicare, Medicaid, the military and veterans health care program. Those are all falls under HIPAA. Why? Because they have your PHI, protected health information. Other cover entities include what's called health care clearing houses. And these entities process non-standard health care information they receive from another entity. Like, what are we talking about here? Could be billing services, customer service department, any 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 department that pro that process process patient information provided by a healthcare institution and translated into a standardized code, which is following HIPAA. This co also could include technology companies because they could have access to that information. They have to comply under HIPAA. Cloud service providers, if you're storing your information into the cloud, they have this PHI. Anyone with access to PHI is subject to HIPAA. Hopefully this makes sense. It's not only that, it's that under business associate. What is business associate? You remember we talked about, about those terms. Let's define them that. Let's define them now. Is any person or entity that performs certain functions or activities like what? They're not the doctor, they're not the nurse, but they're they're not the billing department, but they're processing the claim. They're analyzing the data for the hospital. 
could be a data analyst. Billing. Those people involve the use or disclosure of PHI on behalf or provide the service to a covered entity. While business associates are not covered entity, they often work with covered entities and therefore need to comply with most of the HIPAA regulations. Simply put, just think of it, because you're a business associate, you're also subject to HIPAA. And that's why, as auditors, we need to, we need to be aware of this. Both covered entities and business associates are required to implement safeguards. And we're going to look at the safeguards. To do what? To make sure the privacy and security of the protected health information and both are subject to penalties if they fail to comply. So even the business associate are also subject to the penalties. And who are the business associate? It could be IT vendors. It could be call centers, cloud providers, legal services, laboratories, court reporters. Why? Because they might have access to personal health information, whether that physical or electronic. So are you telling me that you can never disclose PH, PHI to anyone? Not really. There are, you know, there are rules for that. The privacy rules allow covered entity to use and disclose personal health information without additional authorization for the following, for the following purposes. One, to the person themselves. Think about it. You cannot withhold this information. This is obvious. For matter of treatment, payment, and healthcare operation. That's also, you can release the information as part of an incidental exposure that occurred as a result of otherwise permitted use or disclosure. There's some incidental exposure and you have to release it. When there is a valid authorization from the individual, you gave them the authority. After providing the individual a chance to agree or object, you tell them whether you want to agree or object and obviously they have to agree in order to release it. In a form of a limited data set for purposes of research, public health, or health care operations. So you can provide this information to research as long as you redact it, basically eliminate the information. You see those forms where they kind of black out certain things? As long as you black out the PHI, the identifiers, you will be fine. And for activity deems in the public interest or the benefit as prescribed by law. So let's talk about the safeguards. We have administrative safeguards, which is basically doing what? Risk analysis and management. First, if you are under HIPAA, you have to conduct an accurate and thorough assessment of the potential risks. Simply put, where do you think the risk occur and the vulnerabilities to the confidentiality, integrity, and availability? Because you need to know where the risk lies. You have, you have to make risk assessment. Also, information access management. You have to implement policies and procedures for authorizing access to either PHI or EPHI, and only the people who are supposed to have access give them role-based access. So you assess the risk, you give access, you train your workforce, provide training program regarding security and privacy, let them know about the importance of HIPAA, and they have to be aware of this, make sure training on a regular basis, and implement sanction policies to discipline those who violate, because otherwise you're going to be disciplined by the government if that's not happened. And evaluate on a, on a periodic basis, assess how well the organization's security policies and procedures are working. So just don't, you know, set the rules and forget about them. And always have a contingent, contingency plan. Establish and implement policies and procedures for responding to emergencies or other occurrence that could damage the system. For example, have a backup in the cloud, secured. You also want to have physical safeguard. Physical means basically what? actual safeguards, locks on the door, so you cannot access it, especially if it's a paperwork or give people access to the server. Facility access control, implement policies and procedures to limit physical access, locks to electronic information, as well as physical facilities where you house this information. Workstation and device security, for example, if you leave your computer after 30 seconds, it locks out, or after 10 seconds. Implement policies and procedures specifying proper use and access to workstation and electronic media and have policies regarding the transfer, removal, disposal, and the reuse of electronic media. Because you're going to see if you lost your computer or your cell phone and you have information on that, that's a serious issue. Make sure you have technical safeguards, access control, implement technical policies that allow only authorized people access electronic health data information. Audit control, implement hardware, software, and procedure mechanism to be able to know who accessed the information, record of that, examine the access, so you can go back and know what's going on. Integrity controls. What does that mean? Implement policies and procedures to ensure that electronic health information not inappropriately altered or destroyed. Electronic measure must be put in place to confirm that EPHI, which is 
electronic record has not been improperly altered or destroyed also transmission security because you need to transmit this information through email oftentimes or sharing through the network implement security measures to ensure the electronically transmitted PHI not improperly accessed modified or destroyed basically you can encrypt it if need be also you also you want to have policies and procedures of how long you will need to keep the documentation you must adopt written policies and procedures that are consistent with the privacy rules maintained six years after the date of their creation you have to maintain this record or whatever the law requires also on a regular basis review and update documentation in response to environmental or organizational changes that affect the security of the personal health record now within hipaa we have something called high tech health information technology for economic and clinical health in this act of 2009 it was introduced to motivate healthcare providers to implement electronic health record so information can be shared more easily faster cheaper with the goal of improving the healthcare quality safety and efficiency in the healthcare system and this represent a major step in the modernization of the american healthcare system because now the record is electronic and when i visit my doctor they have my record from other doctors it's really cool you don't have to tell them anything they just they could look it up and know what's going on for the past two three years and continue to influence the widespread of adoption of health IT, electronic health record, and secure exchanges of electronic health information. Also, this act promotes the adoption of mean, meaningful use of health information technology, especially EHRs, by providing financial intent, incentive to healthcare providers. Also, the high tech enhances HIPAA protection by increasing legal liability. Simply put, you are responsible for more money. So, what does that mean? You have to be more careful. If there's a breach breach notification rule have changed under the high tech act covered entities are required to report the breach affecting more than 500 individual to the u.s department of health and the human service office for civil rights ocrs now what about if you have less than 500 you have to report to the ocr annually also from high tech you introduces tiered increase in penalties up to 1.5 million per identical violation annually with fines varying based on the entity's awareness cause of the violation whether it was promptly corrected did you correct the problem also it fosters health information exchange again it's high tech facilitating secure standardized compliant electronic data sharing among healthcare stakeholders as a result enhancing care quality speed safety and affordability basically the same concept again and again now the best way to kind of end this up is looking at some common violations of HIPAA this way you get an understanding like okay this is what it is for so what could be some common violations of HIPAA one is sharing personal health information with unauthorized parties so you release this information to someone you're not supposed to or unauthorized disclosure you, 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 you know somehow you made it public without the pe people's consent you did not perform a risk assessment or you failed to manage the identified risk security risk. You did not train your employees. You mishandled the record. It could be those could be paper record or electronic record. You, you, you could be hacked, IT incident, through unsecured network. You could failure to provide notification following a breach. You did not tell the people who were involved. Those are violation. You could be over disclosing information. You simply put somebody comes, you're not sure, just give them the information. Okay, releasing or releasing the wrong patient information to someone <laughs> your people could be posting on social media or gossiping about this that's also a violation of HIPAA some people they're curious you see especially if you have someone uh, like a famous person like a politician or an actor an actress someone who's famous and you, they're treating them they want to know what's going on curiosity put it in, in parentheses <laughs> you lost you lost the computer system or the hard drive or your cell phone or it was stolen from you or you improperly disposed of this information you did not shred it you put it in the garbage you without shredding it someone found it you throw the hard drive and somebody was able to retrieve the hard drive let's take a look at this multiple choice questions from farhat lectures what does the p in hipaa stands for for related to insurance is it p4 protection p4 portability p4 provision p4 premium well uh, i would say if you're not familiar you would say p4 protection right it's protecting you against 
the release of data. Yes, HIPAA is protecting you against the release of healthcare information, but it's this P is not for protection, therefore A is out. Well, is it about premium? Premium, premium means insurance premium. Well, insurance companies are subject to HIPAA, but the P doesn't stand for premium. So we're down to 50-50. Is it provision or is it pro is it provision or is it portability? Uh, I don't know what provision is. It's portability. And <laughs> what does that mean? The portability refers to what? That health insurance premium can transfer with you from one job to the other. So if, you have, if you're working for a company and you leave that company, go to another company, your coverage will stay between the two jobs. This is what portability is. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs to help you understand this important topic, HIPAA, on the CPA exam. We have to know this is the new CPA exam. We have to be familiar with this. Invest in yourself. The CPA exam is worth it. Good luck. Study hard. And of course, stay safe.